Hey guys, welcome, welcome for coffee date. I got my stuff here. It's actually a tea date over here. Hi. Let's check the tea. Nose. <laughs> Have you guys ever gone live and had spinach in your teeth? I've done that many times over the last decade. Hey guys, welcome. This is one of my favorite times to spend with you. Um, this, If you're new here, this weekly coffee date is something I started about two months ago. And most Sundays at 4 p.m. Eastern, I love to come here and invite you to bring a mug of something delicious and nourishing so we can go into more of the the deep waters together more into the heart hello it's so nice to have so many of you on we're streaming over on the whole fit brand facebook page We've got a small group over there um, and then here on instagram obviously with you guys here Ooh, we've got denmark in the house i love when you guys write where you're coming from ottawa canada guelph vancouver london hello Hey, so let's go about 40 minutes today. I do have a, a topic I want to throw out to you guys. So if we're sitting at a cafe right now, I would want for us to go around a table <laughs> and share what have we learned most over the last two years? What's been a personal integration or personal revelation? Um, and I wanna share something that I realized about myself coming coming out of the last two years uh, but while you guys are getting settled I've got my I've got a decaf green tea going here I'm gonna just pop her down and get that ready to go so if you don't have something cozy up with us um, and I'd love for you to think about what that's been for you what has been something that you have not only learned but have integrated and it, integrated the definition of integrated that you have started putting that really into practice on a daily basis. So you could pop it into the chat um, if you're already clear on that. But maybe I have a feeling that what I'm going to share with you today will speak to some of you, maybe many of you. Um, there's a saying, if you look up the definition of the word in Lakesh, I-N-L-A-K-E-S-H, it's translated to mean, I am another you. Isn't that beautiful? I am another you. And I feel like we are, we've landed in this place now, especially within our in-person social circles and online as well, where we have all been shaken and we have landed in a place that feels more like home. In a, wh whether that be geographically, physically, or whether that be within our friendships, our social circles, we have found more people that are another us walking this earth, right? And this is why I highly encourage you to be here for this conversation live. And um, anytime you have the opportunity to jump on a live stream with uh, somebody that you really resonate with online, when they open up the opportunity for you to be in conversation and to um, just be with other people taking in a topic, you'll often meet more people that reflect back to you your values. So if you're looking for someone to, or if you're looking for more people in the online space, especially that reflect back to you, your values, especially in this time, that's really, really important. Lives like this are wonderful to attend live. So I'll, I'll continue to say this every time we start this coffee date off be paying attention to the comments and I encourage you to meet one new friend today. Find somebody who shares something in a way that you're like, mm, she's another me or he's another me. Okay, some quick updates just before we dive into the topic. So uh, first of all, I have a detox program coming up that I've been running for over 10 years called Ready, Set, Glow. Let me know if you're already in that playground. We do an annual detox together for seven days and it's not some crazy thing. It is really seven days of putting the pause button on in our life to give our liver a chance to just breathe a little more and to go to a deeper level of growth and healing and health within ourselves 
um, through some changes we make in that seven days. So there are releases that happen for people, whether it be weight releases or emotional releases. Um, but I assure you, it's always more helpful to do things as a group than it is to do it on your own. So I have that detox coming up. We are cleansing April 25th through May the 1st. And you can find that I actually have put anything I talk about here onto a, a landing page for you guys, wholefit.com forward slash live. If you want to go there to ever see any, a link for something like the detox, you'll find it there. Um, I'll be doing the welcome live stream April 22nd, I believe is the date. So a few days before we start, I go through the ebook and get everyone acquainted with what we're doing. So if you want to join us for that, it's $55. You only pay once and then you can join every year if you'd like, or, or you can of course do it on your own timing. Um, also another program I run called the beautiful life lab. I just wanted to mention here cause we've had a few people join, uh, even today. I just did the live stream check-in a quarterly, a quarterly live stream with the group last Sunday. That's why I wasn't on live here. Um, so it's a nice recent recording that guides you through the, the resources within that program. If you're looking for a system um, and a community that is focused around leading your life, leading your health, leading your business, and really living in alignment and in uh, congruent with your values, which is part of what I'm gonna talk about today actually. But uh, the reason I wanted to mention it to you is the next quarterly live stream I do in June, end of June, is going to incorporate lifestyle cleansing from my little ebook called The Seasonal Scrub. Uh, so, that's going to be great. It's going to be nice timing to get into our life and, and cleanse out the old, plant some new seeds that we will harvest in, in the coming six months. So uh, what I wanted to say there was if you have purchased the seasonal scrub before, it's a mini ebook, um, but there is a promo code for you in there for the lab. Or if you are in the lab already, you receive the seasonal scrub for free as part of that. So just wanted to give you the heads up there. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is in two weeks, for this coffee date, so the end of the month, I'm gonna be doing a supernatural green cleaning class live here with you guys as part of our, our time together. So I want to I want to go into this topic because so many of us are thinking about spring cleaning right now and green cleaning and um, I absolutely love the, the very natural cleaning line that doTERRA has and I want to take you through a simple class on it and how you use the product. So if that is your jam, uh, join us for that coffee date um, in the last week of April. Okay, I can't wait to come back up and read your comments at the end. Um, so keep them coming. I can see a lot of you sharing some of your lessons and integrations over the last two years. And there's been so many, I think. Um, so. I was scrolling Instagram, which I, I haven't actually been doing too much of over the last month. I have been really busy in, in life stuff. Just, you know, many of you can relate. Uh, maybe you're, you're flipping a lot of your life on its head right now. Um, so we're in the last mile of a marathon as a family with a lot of those pieces. But uh, I just happened to be browsing Instagram and I, I follow Jordan Peterson. And something that he posted uh, on Instagram really like, you know, sometimes you just read those things. You're like, oof, yes, right? Um, and it was, I think it's something out of his newest book. And he wrote, do not rescue someone that does not want to be rescued. Do not rescue someone that does not want to be rescued. Okay. So let's, let's talk. I want to, I want to expand on this a little bit and what this is meant to be personally. Um, but I also, I just want to take a look at where we are, like in the timeline. I'm going to go kind of deep here with you guys around this concept today. So I hope you're here for it. I hope you appreciate that, um, which is the complete reason I started doing these coffee dates is I just got to a point where I was truly fed up with the junk food that has become social media. Just, I won't go into detail there. You guys all know what I mean. I'm sure where it's just lacking so much depth. It's just like everything's in the shallow end. So anyway, that's how we, that's how we roll here. So we are completely, completely, completely out of the timeline of sharing information in the hope that it will 
influence somebody to make different decisions. We are completely out of that timeline. There was a time for that, yes. And I'm sure um, you can all think back over the last two years of some morsel of information that was shared with you that caused you to expand, that caused you to see things differently, um, that caused you to, to unlearn or question something that you always held to be true, right? I think there's been a lot of these. Uh, some of you have done like quantum leaps in, in some areas, right? Where you are a completely different person today than you were two years ago. But we are, we are officially out of that timeline of sharing information. Um, and you're, you're probably feeling that too. You're seeing that there isn't this energy anymore of sharing things with this hope of awakening people um, because that time is done. Not over, right? Like not, it's not as if these awakenings aren't going to continue happening, but it's just that it is not the time anymore for those of you who have had personal revelations even prior to the last two years and started to show up and speak and share and help. Um, it's just that that is not your role anymore. Okay, it, some people, it is their role. Maybe they have newly awakened and, 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 and they're processing things and sharing it from that space. And through that, they build trust with people because maybe they're within groups right now that are starting to ask questions and um, feel something's not right, but they don't wanna go like full in, deep dive. They don't wanna be labeled as something, right? So. There are people who are still continuing to share and help people in these times. But um, if you're somebody who was very early on in doing this, that that's not your role anymore. So I want to first, if you haven't yet, I'd love to invite you to share with us what has been a key lesson or integration for you over the last two years. I see a lot of people sharing over on Instagram. We have about 150 over there. Um, not as much over on Facebook. Welcome you to post there as well, you guys. Uh, what's been something you've integrated that was was a lesson you had to learn over the last two years. Um, previous to this experience that rocked the entire world in 2020, you didn't really know what degree of worship, and I, I want to use the word worship very intentionally here. You didn't know the degree of worship that someone had in their life in wanting to be led, wanting to be led by government, by the church, by Hollywood, by celebrity, whether that be, you know, celebrities in Hollywood or self-help gurus, self, self-defined gurus. Um, or to zoom out a little more, just to even make it even more broad, we, we really didn't know the degree of which people in our life or in our circles found comfort in being within a preliminary social credit system. I don't think I need to go into specifics there, but really a social credit system has been in place already, not actually, but in essence, where if you do something, you're granted something. We see this even on Instagram, right? We see people being censored all the time if they don't play by the rules of the social media gurus and lords. We see it all the time. And, and conversely, we see people doing things on social media just to get something, just to get likes and followers, right? So there's a lot of areas in our life where we've had this kind of template in place but what we didn't quite understand was how many people in our life fa actually find great comfort within that. And this is going to lead into this, what I'm getting at here around do not rescue someone that does not want to be rescued. So I want to go personal with you guys here. What myself and I'm sure some of you here, may maybe many of you here, journeyed into over the last few years was an effort to help people who didn't see what was happening as it was happening or what was coming. 
Now I realize how smug that sounds. Trust me. I don't, I don't even like saying something like this. It's just, I'm a big believer in, you can always check information that somebody is sharing by examining the life that that person is leading. When you know someone's personal story, you know what they've been through in their life, you know how they've been stretched and rocked, you know what they've come through. Um, When their life is an example of what is possible, when you divert off path and create something that is in deep alignment, when you are the example of that, you are somebody who is in a position to see things differently to see things perhaps with more clarity than than somebody who has tended to go most of their life following a certain path that was carved out for them by the very people and systems that are now saying you've got to go this way is is this making sense so it is Conversely, it is wise not to pay attention to someone telling you to do something or giving you information if their life is not an illustration of their ability to take action accordingly and if their life is not aligned with their values and if their values aren't to some degree a reflection of your own. Probably a good idea to not take too much of what they're sharing as truth for you, okay? Always be looking for evidence of someone taking action in alignment with what they believe to be true. This is why This is why trust with the government and the medical system right now is at an all-time low. Let's be real. Some of you might not be willing to admit that, but that is what is in the atmosphere right now. Compliance is at an all-time high, but trust is not. Trust is at an all-time low. And that is what we're feeling in the atmosphere. Most people at this point can sense something's not right. So back to what I was, I was getting at, if you, if you were feeling confident and convicted enough over the last two years to share information with people you loved, and I, by information, I mean information that contradicted the six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 o'clock news, okay? If you, were, if you were diverting from what was being shared because you could feel things firing off in yourself, that you, you just, something's not right here. Um, and you weren't someone who typically shared things that felt conspirational, right? We all, we all have friends in our life that tend to be more of the conspiracy people. They've been that way far before this whole experience of the last two years. Um, if you're someone who typically isn't conspirational in your thinking, um, there is a good chance that you you were put in a position because you felt something to be true. You knew something was not right. And there's been a time in your life where you diverted off path. You left what the majority was doing or the pack or the, the mindset of, of the group. You did something different um, because you were taking action based on your intuition or the way the Holy Spirit was guiding you. You've probably done this at least once in your life. And you may have at that point in your life also experienced ridicule. And I'm talking about like before 2020 happened, but you navigated it. You practiced critical thinking. You were asking questions at that time. You committed to staying true. You led your life. And and what happened next was you achieved something that was congruent with your values because that was the goal. That is always your North Star is to live and stay true, okay? And to ask questions when things don't feel right. So 
I'm trying to connect dots here. If you are somebody who in 2020, for example, or 2021 was sharing information to try to help people and expand their awareness even, and, and face ridicule as you were, the, the reason you probably felt confident enough to do that, and yes, as Kim said on Insta, thick skin, you had thick skin around this, you were, you were prepared to do this, was because you had already done this at one point in your life. where you know you went first you went first you you did something that other people mocked or ridiculed you for um and it turns out it worked out and and maybe you even had people and i, and I have many examples of this in my life i've i've always 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 even when i was a little girl i've always been one to when everyone's looking this way i'm looking over here um i'm always interested in the thing that most people aren't finding interesting <laughs> if that makes any sense like what and I'm, I'm very curious, like very, I'm a very curious person. Learner is one of my top strengths. I love to learn, but I think even deeper than that, I love to learn about the path less traveled. I digress a little bit there, but there was a, there was a time in your life where you went first and it was impactful enough for you to see something with a sharper clarity than what people around you were seeing. You saw patterns, you saw maybe as it's often referred to, the matrix. Um, you stepped out of it for a moment, right? So you were able to see, you were able to see the systems in our world that keep people oppressed and disconnected from their own knowing. Because when you did something for the first time where you were leading your life from the front and doing something unconventional, you received ridicule and it, it was confusing. How do more people not see this? Is that inner voice, right? So. So from this place of personal power and experience prior to the last two years, if this is resonating with you and you were somebody who was sharing information to, to try to help people, you were sharing it from a place of love and you were sharing your revelations or perhaps the book of Revelation and you 1000% experienced what it felt like to be an outcast over the last two years, right? You check done yes you absolutely with at least one person in your life were considered an outcast um and then how you respond to that is connected to the role you were born to play in this time of our life in the last two years and going forward some of you might have shut down and that's okay some of you started to share information and it and you weren't quite ready to experience what came next and that's okay you're there's gonna you're gonna be up at bad again don't worry <laughs> um but i'll share personally if you know me well or if you've been here for a while um you've likely gathered from me that i care very much i, I care deeply um about the details in things, I infuse my, my passion and my heart into really every detail of my life and work. Like I, I don't take shortcuts. Um, I only appreciate convenience if it's supporting me in living more congruently with my values. Like if I, this is, this is a lot of what I do in the Beautiful Life Lab. I, I explore and I teach people ways to, to do things in a tighter, finer way to live their values more absolutely. Um, so that's my main goal when it comes to convenience. I do the opposite when it comes to things that are not supporting me in living congruently. So I practice doing the inconvenient thing often in small ways, like taking the stairs when there's an escalator right next to it, right? Because I understand what that's doing in that moment. It's increasing my capacity. And it's helping me not become desensitized to all the ways in our life that are trying to just be convenient, like QR code world, right? Every, everything and everything that's going to continue to be sold to us guys is going to be all about through the marketing of convenience. That will be how they market everything going forward. Um, I also don't share anything with you that I am not in daily practice around or have fully integrated. So, so I've, I've devoted much of my last 15 years, you know, and that's really the time frame that, yeah, about 15 years that I've, I've been 
doing my work under my brand. Um, much of my work on a personal level has, has focused on removing as many hooks as possible that keep me dependent on systems because part of my impact and legacy is to disrupt the, the noise and distractions that these systems are creating. So I can't be in it in order to influence it. Does that make sense? And, I, and again, I'm, I'm just kind of focusing the lens on myself and my experience because I know this is going to, to resonate with some of you. Some of you have a very similar archetype or, or build um, as I do. But even if you don't, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that there's something that will touch your heart today as we, as we talk about this. So, um, and I'm an activator. So I mean, how many of you have done your strengths? Let me just take a sip of tea. What's your number one strength? So I'm an activator and something I can assure you of with great clarity that I've come to realize about myself more so in the last two years than, than ever before is I care very little, even though I care very much about certain things, I care very little about whether people think I'm a good person or not. Oh, we've got some empathy, high empathy in the group. So that's my bottom. And I'm going to share how that plays into all this. <laughs> I'm so glad we have some people high in empathy here to help carry this. Some of you are on my team and that's why we work, we work well. Um, okay, so what I just said there is, is really key to my own personal learning, okay? Um, I care very little about whether people think I'm a good person. And I focus with great effort on simply being as good a person as I can be uh, without showing it, without talking about it. And I strive every day to come closer and closer and closer to who God created me to be. And this is likely the most frustrating element that the systems are up against with people like me. And it's aggravating to people that may have been around me who had to shut down a part of themselves in order to be able to continue fitting in with a system that uses the I am a good person badge as the hook. If that is, that is, that is a primary way of being able to control someone is, is suggesting that they are not a good person if they don't do whatever you want them to do. So as an activator, as a teacher in this space for over 10 years, um, and as someone who has achieved some of the metrics that the world defines as successful, there were many people within my social media circles that had placed me on a pedestal of sorts. Um, even, even, I could kind of describe it as, as kind of a mother figure in their life. And while the essence of uh, things that I've shared here over, over the last decade and, and the words that I've shared here has not changed. I mean, you can look back at things that I was sharing 10 years ago and it's exa I'm, I'm the same person as I was then. Um, the context of our world changed. And that's when things started to get uncomfortable because as I continued to maintain a stance in integrity with what I share, suddenly this uh, kind of lion energy and leading from the front didn't feel so good for people if it meant that they were going to be banned from their social circle in person or online. Um, if it, it didn't feel so good if it meant that someone was gonna now be labeled as not one of the good ones. However, the government or legacy media companies were defining being a good person, right? So I have not changed throughout this whole time, but what, what did change for me as this was happening was the responsibility I felt for other people. This, this for me personally went on steroids in 2020 and much of 2021. This 
burden, this heaviness that I carried of, I've got to continue sharing. I've got to, I've got to continue showing up um, because I, I care very deeply right now that the people that I can influence or impact or connect with get this. It, it just, it felt overwhelming, the responsibility I felt. And I have no idea where that came from. Like who, who put me in charge of thinking I'm supposed to save anybody, right? It just, it was heavy. Um, so back to the topic I opened up with of do not try to rescue someone who does not want to be rescued. With Activator being my number one, and a few seconds ago I shared with you that empathy is my bottom strength. So if you're familiar with Strength Finder, there's 34 strengths. You you have like five that are really dominant, and then and they're all they're all strengths. And you flex, you you do certain things at certain times, especially when you you just have to. But your greatest impact and, and you are most effective when <laughs> hey Anna, <laughs> when you stay working within the gifts that you were created to work with. So I can flex into empathy, obviously. We all can, we can all flex within these strengths. Uh, But for me personally, when I stay there too long or I'm not living and working within the strengths that God designed me to really impact through, um, I start to become, and, and, and I'm saying I, but I'm sure you can all relate to this, if you know yours, you just start to become a very overwhelmed, diluted version of who you are here to be. So my, my role is to lead my life detached from how it is received because I meant to activate those that are aligned with what I'm modeling. So what I felt through the last two years was happening. I, I really had to learn this the hard way because I would have many moments of disappointment, resentment, um, just frustration, sadness with what was happening because I was attached to the outcome. I was attached to how people I cared about and people, and if you're here, that's you, people that had trusted me at some point in our time here, I I cared very much um, about seeing the results of a better income outcome for them. And I really stayed there for too long. I was there for a solid year and a half, almost two years. Um, And it's only really been about six months ago that I finally started to integrate what I'm, what I was sharing at the beginning of this um, with deep peace in my heart that it's not up to me to save people. It's not up to you to save people. That's up to God. And if you're in someone's life in the right timing and you're through how you're living your life, it, it moves them closer to decreasing the amount of worship they may have within our broken world and instead be going in and looking up. If you are the reason that somebody does start to do that, that's why you're in their life, but you are not responsible for what they do with you and with how you are living, especially if you are um, to pull on Star Wars, if you are part of the resistance, (laughs) if you are somebody who is living congruently and staying true. Um, You're the most rebellious person in the world right now. So it's not your responsibility to change how somebody receives the way that you live and the information that you share. And I mean, my, my lived experience, like many of you can relate to, and decisions that I continue to make are from a place of discernment and clarity that is enough to help another person if that's the reason that I'm in their life, right? Like if, if that's, if that's how we came to know each other, then I need to just trust that process and not be attached to some, um, effort to change their mind. Right. And and I really got lost there guys. I really, 
even if I wasn't sharing it in, in that way, it was, it was deeply felt. I was very frustrated, very disappointed, right? I'm, and, and if I'm carrying those heavy things, then my ability to actually move things forward, like I am designed to do is, is greatly impacted. Um, and you know, there's going to be, I, I think the reason I, I feel prompted to share this is, is we're in this kind of lull time. Things have slowed down a little bit. Um, there's going to be more opportunities for us all to practice this as we continue to stay true because, um, these, these systems seek most for control. They, that is their, their highest priority is, is control. And, um, so there will be other ways that they continue to create situations that allow them to do that. Um, and I think it's, it's just important to understand that as you continue to stay true and as God continues to open up doors for you to do that, that you are not attached to being some kind of savior for people that truly aren't looking for you to be a savior. Um, I mean, I, I think that it, what I'm describing here is really an ethos of live and let live, right? Hey, it's all out there. Like I said, this timeline of sharing information um, is over. There's nothing, I really believe that everyone is at the point now where they have been able to make decisions that felt most true for them. And if they made decisions that were not in alignment with that, they're going to be given other opportunities to snap that elastic band and get back to the heart. Um, it's not as if it's game over. It's just, they're going to be set back, right? If you stayed on mission, if you, if you stayed true through this, you are much further ahead right now than somebody who ignored their intuition or the prompting of the Holy Spirit to stay true. They're going to have more, a lot more work to do over, over the coming years. But, um, you know, I'm rooting for, for, I think the thing that's been most helpful as I've realized this, and if, if this has been you, if you have felt attached to how people have received things you have shared, um, and perhaps you've been attacked and ridiculed, it's very hard to move forward if you don't release those expectations and if you don't forgive in some situations. Um, we need to be rooting for all people right now that, that they continue to experience information and people that move them into alignment. Obviously they do that themselves no one else moves you into alignment, but it, sometimes you come across people in the right timing for you. I was talking to a friend at church today and she was telling me about some family members she's been trying to help and influence. And it's like, babe, you're not going to be the one to influence them. It's going to be someone else. It's going to be the guy in the cubicle next door, <laughs> whatever. Um, sometimes the people you care about most aren't meant to be influenced by you. And um, that's been a tough thing for me to learn. And I, I know it's, it's probably been something many of you have, have felt too. Um, and also recognizing that for many people right now, they already feel like they're in alignment. Even if it's not something that you would ever want for yourself, they, they do. I had to realize this within uh, Canada, that there were enough people within Canada that were okay with how things were being handled. Um, that defend it and that's okay. I don't agree with it. And so I did what I needed to do. And I came to a point where I had to trust that those that weren't okay with it, that are still in Canada, um, staying true to their conviction. Cause keep in mind, I'm not saying that one person's wrong and one person's right. I'm saying that there are people who actually are very much in agreement with how the country is being run. And if you're not, for example, let's say you're living in Canada and you're not, I fully believe, and I fully know this, that you, there will be provisions, there's protection over you and there will be doors that are opened for you because you have stayed true. One of my favorite Bible verses, is Jeremiah 29 11. My grandfather used to write it inside of every birthday card growing up 
for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, plans to give you hope and a future. And if you are someone right now who has just, you feel you have felt defeated through all of this, don't you worry. There, there is going to be just trust. There's going to be doors opening for you because it is a, the greatest testament of your, of your love and of your commitment and gratitude for this life is staying true to what you know is true. Um, and this has been a, a massive test for many of us for sure. It has like, it has not let up. It's just been so much coming at us, right? Um, but I, anyway, this is a little bit of a, a call to action in these times because it's important that we all think back to the, over the last two years, what has been that one lesson that we have had to learn? Are we ready to practice it again? Because like I said, there's going to be more that comes, but you are a different person today than you were two years ago. You, your capacity has expanded. Everything that has happened over the last two years has moved you closer and tighter to who you are here to be. And um, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of all of us, regardless of how we've handled this, because it's been, it's been rough. But, you know, everyone's, there, there, there will be people that hear what I'm saying here right now, and they might be feeling shame, or they might be feeling like I'm nuts. That's okay. Listen, um, we're all at different points here. So the, the thing that has been evident through this is at the end of the day, we truly are on our own with this. There is no government or politician or doctor that is going to come through for you in your 11th hour, in your worst hour, in your worst moment. You really do have to be an advocate for yourself. Um, and community is vital right now, which is why I'm glad so many of you are still on here live and, and commenting and sharing with each other. Um, dive into the comments right now because you'll meet a new friend. It is, it is just, and you never know where that could go too. You never know how that might lead to a conversation about starting a community somewhere. Um, it, it is just, it is just absolutely vital right now that the people that you are keeping close in your life and especially the people that you're allowing to speak into your life are living a life that reflects back to you, your values, like absolutely most important thing of all time right now. Uh, no more wishy-washy, no more lukewarm. Obviously, it doesn't mean you're ending friendships in your life. It just means that you're investing your focus into more people that reflect back to you what matters to you, right? So I want to hang out in the comments with you for a little bit. Drink my tea. And I, I really just wanted to open up this conversation around what have been the lessons because this has been such a big one for me. And I feel so much peace in my heart over it. Like I, I'm just so fully detached to what other people do anymore. And I obviously needed to learn that. <laughs> All right, let me scroll up to the top. I want to read some of the lessons and um, take some time right now before we hop off in about 10 minutes to message a new friend. Lesson, lesson, lessons. And I think, you know, the, the thing that I just keep thinking of is like, man, we are, we are all on just different points of our journey and we have to just respect that and love that in each other. And it just means that you're not the one that is meant to be the one that lights something up in everybody at the same time. Does that make sense? Like, let's say, let's say you're the only one in your social circle that has been asking questions and living a little differently than the others in your group. You maybe aren't the one to influence them towards a different way, or maybe they're not meant to even take on a different path or live a different way. Maybe that's not what they're going to do, but usually those are the relationships that are the toughest, right? It's the people that we care most about. Um, 
that we we just wish we could have that alignment like maybe it was all in alignment and all flowing so nicely before 2020 and then 2020 happens and it's like all of a sudden now everything feels different right so that's okay that's okay it's totally okay and you just have to respond with your time and your energy and what you're investing into a little differently oh bulgaria hello all right, let me scroll down. I want to get to the part where we were talking about lessons. So turning fear into courage. I love that. Fear is different for all of us. Like I shared with you, um, I have no fear around what people think of me. I, I mean, very little. Of course, that'd be, that'd be crazy to say I have no fear. I shouldn't say no fear. I have very little fear or concern around what people think of me. Or like I said specifically, whether they think I'm a good person or not. <laughs> What I do fear is being controlled. I fear a world where we don't have the ability to choose anymore. I, it makes me very nervous the way I see people trying to control other people right now, whether it be within the systems or friends, people trying to control other people. That So, you know, all of us have different fears, but what does that look like to turn fear into courage? It looks at controlling what we can control. It looks at, it looks at, you know, where can, where can I do a better job being an example of live and let live? Because was I trying to control people, right? Protecting my energy. Love that. Yes. The importance of independent thinking. Very tricky in these days, isn't it? When we're being told to what to think, what to do. Um, and if we don't do what they tell us to think and do, we're seen as a bad person. All relatable. Micro movements of intentional, sustainable change. There's so many good ones here. I'm going to just read them out, especially for the podcast. Erica over on Facebook. I've been a people pleaser most of my life and during the last couple of years has felt challenging as I've had different viewpoints of what was going on and what I had to share wasn't pleasing to most people. I also have woo, woo in my top five strengths and my different viewpoints weren't wooing anybody. Oh, that's big. That's big because you just wanna see people positive and, and you wanna to contribute to their experience. And so it's really challenging to feel as though you actually didn't do that. Yeah. Follow my inner guidance always. Even if it feels scary, it will take you where you need to be. I fully believe that. Choose the playground your soul wants to play in. Love it. I now understand why I never felt like I fit in. Right. You're not meant to fit in this world. Look up all of the great Bible verses on that topic. To be in the world, but not of the world. What does that mean? Right. Oh, I love this. Somebody said to Nadia, this comment makes me want to be your friend. That is what I'm talking about. That is the benefit of being on live. Make sure you guys connect offline. I love it. Um, all right. What else do we have here? Building a parallel economy that makes the current crumbling systems irrelevant. I love that. That was, I did a video, I don't know, two weeks ago. Um, Buckminster Fuller. That's a quote you guys need to look up on. Rather than investing your energy into destroying what exists right now, just create the parallel society so the old becomes inevitable. And that's the energy of much of what we're talking about here. If you just focus on living and leading your life, let the chips fall. Let people decide for themselves. You keep doing you. You keep staying true. And you're going to create something that other people are going to want to be a part of. Think about all of all, what's happening on every level. Think about healthcare. What's going to happen to the very broken healthcare system as smaller, more nourishing health clinics open up with people truly focused on whole health and honoring the body as a whole? What's going to happen to those broken systems? People within those broken systems are going to want to come over to the other ones because they can see movement happening there in the right direction, not movement towards being a lifelong customer of the pharmaceutical industry, right? 
So I love the idea of parallel economy. So looking at your own life in that way, just investing in what you want to see created. So many great comments here, guys. I wish these would save. Quality over quantity in friendships. Totally. You really only need one really close friend, maybe two, right? You can spark someone's journey, but not walk the path for them, right? Yes, I've had to focus my energy on home and family instead. The ones who wanted to hear did so. I love that because it's actually that simple. That is how we actually influence the world. In the macro level is by focusing within our home. If you're ever not sure of what to do, just look at where you can provide a more nourishing and nurturing experience within your four walls. Triggers are treasures. That's cute. I like it. Really taking care of myself and feeling all the feels. Canceling the noise. That's tough, right? That's tough. There's just, it's just constant. It's, it's been a very traumatic experience over the last two years. Waking up every day and it's like, what today, right? Um, so having practices in place and boundaries around that, what you're allowing in is really important to, to your movement and, and moving forward. All right, let me see if there's anything that I might want to crack open here. question everything. I make my decisions. How I live my life is up to me. God has us. It's great. This is the part I'll have to edit out of the podcast when I go silent for a minute. (laughs) Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, I love that you guys love this topic. It was just, I don't always come to these with a topic. I like to, but uh, I really felt this on my heart today. Especially when I, and you know, look at that ripple effect, right? I read a post on Instagram. It just had me really reflecting. And I was like, I want to dive into this topic a little bit more together. Mm -hmm. I'm super curious. People often say I ask a lot of questions, but learning is last on my list. Hmm. I would maybe redo your assessment. If you're somebody who loves to learn and ask questions, you probably are a passionate learner in life. Um, Are we back? You probably have to have practices as somebody high in empathy to not lose yourself and not feel drained um, because there's such a need for you right now. No, this is not human design. Yeah, strengths finder. All right. Let me go down to the end here. Building the courage and confidence that I am worthy enough of knowing the truth and standing in it. I love it. Yes. Can we chat about Disney? Oh, man. Parents hold the keys. Watch what happens with Disney right? Um, I truly wish that we had doctors that cared enough. I, okay. I actually think we do. I think unfortunately the system that they have been raised in and within does not actually allow them to do their work from that place. So, Again, I think that what we're going to see come out of this and what's going to be created is going to be good for all, including the doctors, right? They, they, they started within that for a reason. They took an oath and they're unfortunately within a system. I mean, I know a few doctors personally who they're horrified with what's going on, but they can't do much their hands are tied well they lose their license so i mean it's just it's going to require a divestment a divestment of people money shifting like we talked about with the parallel Uh, that's how the impact is going to happen not really because of doctors because they they just they really can't do much at this point some have right many many have 
Um, but look what's happened. All right. Oh, I wish I could save your comments. There's so many great ones on here. Um, I really wish they would save them. Oh, I worked as a nurse for nine and a half years and was just terminated last week due to mandates. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Don't, doors are gonna open for you. Have we talked about this a few times, a few coffee talks before this? Um, whoa, what a resume. You will be most hireable with what is coming next. Mm. Also, don't be surprised when you get the call back. Make sure you know your worth at that time. I've noticed there's a lot of shifting happening in industries right now, like the airline industry. Air Canada was about to terminate quite a few pilots within Canada. Do you guys follow Free to Fly? Uh, they, they put out some great content, but they've, um, they've been sharing what's been going on with that. And uh, it's, it's qu quite alarming, actually, what Canada's preparing to do. They were supposed to terminate them in May, and they extended it until November. Um, but from what I understand, Canadian pilots, for example, are trained um, at a very high level comparatively to other countries that are training pilots. And so to lose these pilots within Canada not only affects Canada, but it affects travel globally um, because obviously uh, companies like Air Canada fly to many places around the world. And these pilots are not replaceable. So part of the problem for Canada is they, they assumed through their threats that all of these pilots would get in line with their demands. And when they didn't, they had to extend it because they can't replace them as quickly as they would like to. Um, it will take years. So uh, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, it upsets me so much to, to know people who are being terminated due to these mandates, but I've also seen people be um, requested to come back. Some of them have had pay increases through that. Um, and, and some decided, no, I, that is just so out of alignment for me now. And I've, another door has been opened for me elsewhere. So, mm, I could film the chat. Yes, I, I guess I could just that extra step, right? I just wish it would save. All right, guys. Well, we are at just over five o'clock. Um, it's amazing how quickly an hour goes by, but I really... I really hope that this topic today um, resonated with something that you were feeling as well, that there's been something of the last two years that you recognize has actually been quite a gift. Um, I will carry what I've learned well into the future of realizing and detaching from what people do with something I share, or not even with what I share, but just with how I live. Um, and not taking that on as some kind of responsibility that I have for them, because that is not mine or your responsibility. So anyway, I hope that this content landed and I will be back next week. Maybe we'll just keep it more loose and um, do more conversation not a, as opposed to a topic. Uh, but yeah, lots of love to you guys. And I will upload this to the podcast on Tuesday. And I also put the video over on YouTube if you want to share it with anybody. All right, we'll see you next week.